it depends on how you identify yourself within the industry. If someone said to me, just apropos of nothing, if aliens landed now and said, Dean, what are you? Yeah. I would list a lot of words before I got to the word actor. Everybody to episode 68 of Watch Ross, the one where we're changing direction. It is 2020, folks. Happy New Year. Slightly belated Happy New Year. It's mid-January. Uh, well, slightly past mid-January. 21st of January as we record this episode of Watch Ross. And as I alluded to in the intro there, we're going to change things up this year, aren't we, Petch? We've decided, you know what, we've been giving you the same sort of formulaic episodes of Watch Ross now for pretty much two and a half years. We started this in September 2017. It's now January 2019. 68 episodes, lots of specials. So we've done... We started it just out here, you're right, just out here outside Lily's. Massive shout out to Lily's, you've been a huge part of this for us. Um, but yeah, over 70 episodes now, and we had a chat over Christmas, and I'm like, look, it's time to just mix it up. We're going to start doing things differently, and one way we're going to do that is by, don't get, don't get upset by this, by for now halting the long-form versions of these vlogs. So this is the last version of Watch Ross you're going to see now in its current format. There might be different formats moving forward, um, but ultimately I'll tell you why we're doing that. We can give actors who are watching, and particularly members of ActsOnThis.tv, and if you are an actor and you're not a member of ActsOnThis.tv right now, seriously, get involved for 2020. You have been missing out on some incredible content over the last couple of years. And um, we're gonna be giving you guys who are members even more value this year. Rather than us spending a day, two days, editing a long form version of this vlog that shows behind the scenes of a podcast on actsonthis.tv. We're just gonna get out there and use that time to record more podcasts for actsonthis.tv. So if you are a member, good news for you, you're gonna be getting more podcasts this year than you've ever had before, which brings me on to today's podcast that you're gonna see behind the scenes of right now. We've got two incredible guests, two great actors, Dean Smith, Gary Damer, two top blokes. You'll know Dean from loads of stuff. Uh, back in the day, Waterloo Road. Did you ever watch Waterloo Road, Petch, back in the day? No? You'd have been good in that. You could be good in that now. He only looks 15. He could be in that now. He looks like a school child. Uh, yeah, Waterloo Road, you'll know him from uh, Corrie, Hollyoaks. More recently, stuff like Still Open All Hours with David Jason. Some awesome shows. He's also the host of Monologue Slam. I met Dean at Monologue Slam Manchester. Uh, if you're an actor and you haven't heard of Monologue Slam, go and research that. Awesome things to get involved with. You'll know Gary from East is East. Love that film. Love that film. Top film. Um, you'll also know Gary. He's done Coronation Street, a lot of Corrie. Um, you know, he's done Fresh Meat. That was an awesome show I used to watch. Um, so these are two guys who have been around a long time, done a lot of work, got a lot of experience in the acting industry. Going to be talking to them all about that. But they also host their own podcast. Nothing to do with acting called Behind the Medal. It's a podcast all about running another massive passion of mine and Petchy's more recently as well. I started running marathons in 2010, um, changed my life, not just physically, but like it really helps you with your mental game. I think it's something all actors should do. Everyone should be out running. It's the most under-prescribed antidepressant on the planet. If you're an actor and you're in a, you're in a slump right now, you're not working, um, get out there, move your body, start running. You will become addicted. You'll probably like end up running loads of marathons, but it will change your life. That was what happened for Dean and Gary. They've run marathons all around the world now. Gonna be talking to them all about that, all about their podcasts, acting, just life in general. This is gonna be a good one, I promise you. We're gonna be going up to the apartment now, Petch. We're gonna set up, then we're gonna be back after a few clips of the podcast um, to wrap up this like final era of Watch Ross, which is crazy. Um, and I might put a special t-shirt on Petch for the final scene. So that's something you should stick around for 100%. And then, yeah, if you want to go and watch the full 
um, podcast. You can do that on actsonthis.cv. So I'm going to finish with Brew. Get upstairs. This is the Dean and Gary round table. <laughs> Dean Smith, Gary Damer, welcome to my kitchen, uh, welcome to my apartment. Um, thanks for being here, boys. How are you? I'm very well, man. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Um, absolute pleasure. Um, two fantastic actors, but also a first for this podcast, two other podcast hosts. Have you never yeah. had a podcast people on before? I've never had a po- I don't th- Have we ever had a podcast host on before, Pitch? Who's got their own podcast? Who's that? Oh, Matt Hall. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so he yeah, obviously he wasn't was a, that memorable. I was no. going, who's that? He was on the vlog. <laughs> Technically, he wasn't. We didn't do a podcast podcast with him. So, um, so yeah, this is a first. Um, I will be talking a lot about your podcast today. Um, I listened to it. Um, very much enjoyed it. Um, was very happy to see like the success blow up on the podcast yeah. um, previously on Christmas, where you yeah. uh, Christmas just gone, um, Christmas twenty nineteen, um, where you put an episode out with Mister Ed Sheeran. Yeah, we we saw we recorded it. When did we record it? August time, September. Yeah, yeah. it feels like ages ago. Oh now. my god! And we were just waiting on his management to sign it off, and we'd been getting notices saying, "Please don't release it because we're waiting for Stormzy to get to number one and Eminem to release a record." As if we were interrupting <laughs> oh my that. God. But the thing is, I'm so impatient. So like oh. every week, I was messaging him, going, "Dean, can we put it out yet?" Because I was so excited to release it because I knew how good it was. Yeah. And I was messaging him, "Dean, can we put it out yet?" And he's like, "Mate, we've got to wait for this. We've got to wait for that." I was like, "Fucking hell, come on, <laughs> any but danger?" It, it was like every day that went past that the interview had less credibility or was less fun. I was like, "Mate, it still stands." Up. It's I still know, a, it's evergreen, Gary. I was yeah. excited to put it out. You know what it's like? Oh, you're proud of something? You just oh, wanted yeah. to go yeah. out. You should, well, you just wait until this is finished. I'll be getting messages off Petch Ooh. every day going, can we put the one with Gary and Dean out yet? Yeah, there like, you go, man. You know the drill. We're waiting for Storms to get to number one. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about that. So the podcast is called Behind the Medal. It's all about running and just mm-hmm. endurance sports, I guess. Um, so nothing to do with acting, but I think there's a load of parallels. This is another reason why I wanted to bring you on. I think there's a shitload of parallels mm. between running and marathon you know that's something you talk a lot about in the podcast mm. and actually running the marathon of having an acting career in terms of like you know what it takes to you know to just you know not even well, i guess there isn't a finish line with your acting career but just to just hang in there and you know just keep running i guess well we we always said that running is a pretty much a spot on metaphor for life mm. almost you know yeah. you've got to put a lot of stuff into it to get a lot of stuff out of it like with running if you just turn up to the marathon to a marathon start line and tried it you're gonna fuck up you're Which, gonna feel you know pretty horrendous i've seen people do they i've seen like someone do as well yeah well i've done it and it, <laughs> it didn't it didn't end well but gary that- where did you just turn up to the marathon <laughs> new york yeah <laughs> <laughs> i didn't it wasn't as it wasn't as cut and dry as that my friend was supposed to be running it but she got injured. So she decided not to run it. And I was thinking, it seems such a waste to go all this way yeah. and not attempt it. So I, yeah, I, I attempted it. <laughs> but I tell you what, New York though, I haven't done. I've only, I've only done like the two, like probably, I mean, London's big, isn't it? London's but one then, of the biggest you know, ones in the world. So that's a good that's one. That's pretty yeah. good. I've done that a few times and then done Manchester a few times. Um, but I've not ventured out into like other countries. You boys just seem to be like on a plane here, there and everywhere. We're just, here we are, we're just waiting for the Uber. We're going to Madrid today. Yeah. yeah. You know. But that's the way to do it. It's, the, it's one of the best play, best ways to see the world, I think. Because yeah. by by definition, the, the route of a marathon takes you past all, all the, the best, best places, yeah. 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 So yeah. It, it's just the best way of seeing places. And I've said it before on our podcast, it gives you so much more right to a beer and a party yeah, at time. the end of the run. You can enjoy a holiday then. Yeah. So. Both, mm-hmm. you know, both have got great acting careers. Look at your IMDb, both done great stuff. Um, I didn't know you'd done Still Open All Hours. Yeah, man, this year. That's, that's recent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we, we, I, I shot that in the uh, summer. Uh, it's the first time I'd ever worked with BBC Comedy Department, uh, which has been a dream of mine since I was born, pretty much. Um, I, Me and Gary met doing sketch comedy mm-hmm. in pubs around Manchester. Um, I've written a load of sketch comedy. I've written loads of uh, plays and, and, and treatments that, that comedy. But until you've done comedy, you can't get into comedy. Yeah. That whole horrible circle. So I'd never done anything before. And I got a phone call uh, from my agent who um, had had a phone call from the casting director. Um and they said that I was perfect for the part. I read it. Inevitably, it was a nerdy virgin, which is what the BBC <laughs> make me play constantly. Um, so I went down and did it. But it was Ace Man. I mean, you know, you're working with Sir David Jason. You're working He's with- honestly one of my, like, on, honestly, you it's know, people are like, cool. oh, you know, who you, mm. who's kind of like your acting heroes. Um, a lot of mine aren't Hollywood names. Mine honestly Same. are 
like David Jason would be one of my absolute heroes in terms of, you know, he plays Del Boy mm. and then he plays Frost and yeah. you're like, shit, I would have no idea these two people were the same mm. thing. In terms of character acting, like there's just no better in the yeah. UK, I don't think. The guy's awesome. You know, him, Ronnie Barker was a yeah. massive, you know, bit of a hero of mine. Obviously a great comedian as well, you know, great comedy actor. Um, what was it like, like meeting him and working with him? It was ace, man. I mean, it, it was one of those things. When, when you talk about, bucket list stuff as an actor a bbc sitcom was right at the top the fact Definitely. that it was at pinewood studios as well which you know we were filming next door to james bond nice uh, which you is just slipping on your dinner hour just go all right daniel i'm just gonna <laughs> yeah step if in you need you. A, if you need to talk about how to be sexy it's yeah. cool i'll give you five <laughs> um, and then uh, and so there's all of those things and then on top of that you've got johnny vegas who gary has worked with as well you've got sally Lindsay. you've got all these amazing people but so david jason's the lead um the first time i met him we were at a little re rehearsal studio down in Hammersmith somewhere. Um, and I knew a guy called James Baxter who plays his son in the thing. So yep. me and him were no, talking. Mean, yeah. um, and I was talking to James and David wanders over. And him and he was talking to James about something and David introduced himself. And I said, mate, you've done really well to work with this knobhead for so long. <laughs> and I pointed to, uh, to James. <laughs> <laughs> Which can go one or two ways when you've just met someone. But I think yeah. I want to make an impression. You know, we're doing a comedy show and David pissed himself, punched me in the arm and called me a plonker and walked off. Oh, I love it. And Rodney, I, went, I mean, that's an honor, isn't it? Rodney, yeah. you plonker. I literally text my dad. I was like, dad, Del Boy just called me a plonker. Oh my God. <laughs> I got the um, self tape for Still Open when I was in Madrid with this weirdo. Doing the marathon? Doing the marathon. Holy shit. Well, I've listened to that podcast. <laughs> it's a good stuff. Yeah. So I get this, my agent, my agent rings me, Dean, what, why have I got an international dial tone? Where are you? Oh God. I was like, oh, I'm in Madrid. I'm doing a marathon. She was like, of course you are. What else would you be doing? I've got a tape for you. We need it. We need the tape by Monday morning. Um, have you got someone to do it with you? Yeah, cool. I'm with two actors. Gary and uh, uh, Danny, Danny was Danny there. Yeah. I've yeah. met Danny recently because I'm uh, a patron of uh, Once Upon a Smile. So am I. So yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> ah, so, so I've met right, Danny right, with right. Uh, so, Danny Miller over, over the last few months. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So Danny's there as well. So I said to him, guys, will you help me out? Will you do this thing? They went, yeah, cool. But we kept putting it off. Obviously, we had the marathon. Then we had a big night out. We got very drunk, got very hungover. We kept pushing it back, pushing. And then I said to him, literally, guys, I need it doing now. I need it doing now because I need to send it over. So I had the printouts. We set up the little studio, didn't we? Oh. It was one of those where you set your camera up and um, these guys were so hungover. I've got a great picture of <laughs> Gary with the scripts like that rattling. <laughs> and Tenant. You can hear the paper rustling on the cell <laughs> tape from me. And there's Tenant there and he's not even got, got dressed yet. He's nude pretty much, just holding the camera. And he was shaking that much. He had to prop it underneath a bottle of water. <laughs> oh my God. Um, <laughs> And somehow I managed to book the job despite the efforts of two of my best friends. Like, what, what, not off one tape that was done in M Madrid? No, I, I, I then went and met I was going to say, oh, yeah. hell, you can do my self tapes if you Gary, definitely, yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a 100% success rate with this lad because every time he's done a self tape with me, he's booked the job. So maybe this could be like a little sideline. Oh, my, my, <laughs> listen, I've had quite a decent acting career, right? But my mum's claim to fame, which really fucking upsets me, <laughs> oh, yeah. is Dean um, auditioned for Last Tango in Halifax. Yep. And he did the self-tape in my kitchen, right? So my mum literally goes around telling everyone, going, oh, well, you know, the Last Tango in Halifax? He auditioned in my kitchen. I'm like, mum, you know, I, I've been on the telly a little done, bit as well. Done some stuff as well. <laughs> we talk about this on our podcast, Instagram culture where people see the end goal. They see the top of the mountain, but they don't yep. see how you climb up to the top of it. They see the person with a medal, with a pint or the side, going, look at me. And yeah. you go, oh God, it looks like they're not even broken out in a sweat. Exactly. But they don't see the 26.2 miles of... Um, what I love about marathons is it's me against myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I love. I love the mental game of going, everything inside you is going, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. If you just stop, Ross, the pain will stop. And mm. you're acting careers like that, isn't it? Yeah. You know what? If you just stop going for auditions, all the disappointment will stop, <laughs> right? You just, just drop out. It'll be fine. But then there's that other voice that's going, nah, fuck you. You've got to keep keep going. Yeah. You know, you, you are better than this. You know, you don't give up. And mm. like, I run for a lot of charities, tell you around my eye condition, got this dodgy eye condition. So selfishly, I run for charities who can maybe one day find a cure for this. <laughs> Um, but I'm like in my head it might you know it might sound uh, a bit deep but I'm like I'm running for every one of the every other person who's got this condition who's yeah. now blind because of it who cannot run 
I'm running for you as well. You know, when you when you're running, what what's have you got any special causes or anything that's going through your? Because on lots of marathons, you do get emotional. I've heard it on your podcast yeah. where you you know you're a mess when you cross the finish line, and until someone has put their body through 26.2 miles, or in the acting industry, have put them through cells through 10, 12 years of slog until they actually get that job they want, mm. it is freaking emotional. Yeah, oh. it is. And you, I think you're always, especially on a run, you're always on the edge. And there's certain things that trigger me off is when when I'm running and I see someone wearing a vest or something and they'll say they're running this for, you know, my mum or my granddad. Yeah. Little things like that can just straight away ball my eyes out, you know what I mean? But we do a lot, well, I do, we both do a lot for the Christie charity. That's that's like my main yeah. one. I, I think it's such an important place for Manchester and the work they do. So they're the ones that I try and do all my stuff for, you know, the Christie the Christy, Christy Hospital. So anytime I'm running or anytime I'm watching an event and I see someone run past with a T-shirt on or, you know, the Christy vest or whatever, I get emotional, you know, because it's just, you don't know what, what people are going through, do you? Yeah. To see a little rem- reminder that we're all here and we're all trying to do our bit and, that's that's the one it's, it's the personal stories that get to me mm-hmm. whether they're mine at the time or not we have my, my dad had prostate cancer a couple of years ago right, okay. he's, he's all good now um so we raised a few we did a sketch night for it but around it road. yeah around it we did um a couple of runs and if you saw a prostate cancer t-shirt run past you know you get choked up and um, we did the chicago marathon three days after i found out my granddad had died um, my granddad was a very keen runner, massive part of my life. He was a wow. runner. He, we told the story on the podcast that he once, <laughs> I said to granddad once, so he, did you ever do any marathon distance, granddad? He went, oh, yeah, yeah. So well, <laughs> what, did you, what did you do? You went, oh, I, I, I only did one. I came third. Um, <laughs> and he'd nice. cited the fact that he'd not won as a reason why, yeah, I'm not doing it anymore. It's bollocks. I didn't win yeah. the marathon of 30,000 people. How many people were running in it? Oh, you I have know? no idea. I have no idea. My God. But I'd, I'd written granddad on my arm so on, for the Chicago marathon. So every, as I was running around, I kept glancing down um, and getting very emotional, you know, as, as that was going on. But like, like Gary says about the Christie and yourself, when things are personal, when you see people running and they've got things on their back or you see signs, you know, um, you go, Dave, you know, you can do it. Everyone's thinking about it. Yeah, I get choked. I can, yeah, I yeah. cry like that, mate. Because no doubt someone will have seen granddad written on your arm, seen yeah. you looking at it, seen you filling up and that would have made them fill up. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's, it's, it is, it's so emotional and uh, you, you know, you, your body's so tired and so draining that any little thing can just set you off. Yeah. You've spoken about the emotional connections you have to get yourself through races. Um, I think if you've got that emotional connection with why you want to succeed in the arts industry that's the other thing that will pull you through the shit when you are faced with that you know and when you've, you're facing all the rejection w- what is it that makes you guys what's the thing that pushes you through it when you're literally in the dirt you know get back up and go back out there and, and carry on what was it that i guess there's like a burning desire to do this I, um th- the thing that scares me is that i can't do anything else right okay <laughs> that's that sounds quite stupid it sounds like a gag but i didn't go to uni um, I, instead of it, going to university, I did Waterloo Road. Um, I've made some sidesteps in the industry now. Uh, I, I do a bit of presenting where this is not bad. Um, I do some teaching, uh, started directing a little bit, but it's just to try and broaden the avenues in which I could possibly work. Yeah. Um, because for me, I've always felt an enormous privilege. I make money. My main source of income is from a hobby and that has no pressure attached to it as far as I'm concerned. I'm very fortunate. I go to a meeting. I genuinely do not care if I get that meeting or not. It's That sounds like a, a hyperbole, but it's not. I, mm-hmm. I go, I've given my best. I've prepared. I know what I'm offering you guys. If you don't want it, that's cool. And I walk away. I've been doing this for 13 years now, shit. Um, and if it all turned around and stopped tomorrow, that's cool. But as part of this marathon of life, I just then adapt to how do I finish this race of life? Yeah. How do I stop and how do I change? I don't feel like... I don't have, I'm not handcuffed to the industry. So we've talked about this before. It depends on how you identify yourself within the industry. If someone said to me, just apropos of nothing, if aliens landed now and said, Dean, what are you? Yeah. I would list a lot of words before I got to the word actor. I would list personality traits. I would list my relationships, my family before I got to the word actor, my friendships before I got to the word actor. Some people, what are you? Actor is the first thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it sets you up a little bit for a loss because how can you possibly steer the ship that is your life when the thing that you identify with the most is out of your control. Boom, there you go, everybody. You've just seen three, potentially four, I don't know how many clips of what was an incredible podcast. TV's Gary Day, I mean, that was over two hours. How was it for you? <laughs> yeah, it didn't feel that long, so that's a good sign, isn't it? Always a good sign. Dean? 
Oh, I loved it. Yeah, really nice. Really great. We talked about. I just sort of cut you off there. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. I went. How was that? Yeah, give me the mic back. Um, yeah, we talked about so much there. Um, a lot about the acting industry, but a lot about running, right? And that might sound like it has nothing to do with acting, but there's, you know, that was the real reason I wanted to bring you guys on. You do the Behind the Medal podcast, all about running, but you're both actors, and we spoke about the parallels between running marathons. And really, like the marathon of life, the marathon of being an actor in this industry, um, and the hard work, the patience, and the perseverance that is required to both complete a marathon, but also, I guess there is no finish line in the acting industry, but you know, at least cross the finish line of various goals you might have, whether that's landing your first TV job or your tenth, your first small role or your lead role, whatever that is. Um, just want to expand just for a few minutes on, like, you know, your opinions on that in terms of the patience, the persistence, and. I guess how those parallels overlap from running and investing in your health to running in your acting career. And in, I guess it's the same, isn't it? Investing in yourself. Yeah. Well, I think we, we interviewed a guy a little while ago on the podcast called Scott Cunliffe, and he is an, a, an endurance athlete. He's an ultra runner. Um, and he said to us that you have to believe in the process. Mm. So it doesn't matter what you're doing in your life. You have to put in the amount of hours, the amount of graft that it requires to achieve the thing. If you have an end goal, Cool, but don't focus on that. Focus on the process. Focus on your every day. And that end goal will take care of itself, don't matter what it is. If it's a marathon, if it's securing a job on a soap, if it's landing a film role, whatever it might be, getting an agent, you know, getting headshots even. Focus on the process of you getting up every day and doing your thing, and the end goal will take care of itself. Yeah. Do you know, it just, you just reminded me there, something that I used to have to do when I first started running as well, when, you know, I couldn't get through that, that first mile or, you know, I had no endurance yet, I'd not developed that stamina. Um, I used to just focus literally on the next lamppost. Oh, yeah. I'd go, I'm just going to run to that lamppost. And then when I got to that, I'd focus on the next one. I'm just going to run to that. Or it might be a tree. I'm just going to get to that tree. I wasn't thinking, I've got 10 miles left. It was literally just, where am I right now? And I'm going to focus on that. So if that right now in your overall journey of landing that massive role is like, I have got to start from scratch and I've just got to get to that acting class. You know, and then from there, I've just got to save up that money to get my headshots. And then I've got to use those headshots to get that agent. Don't look at the hole. I think you're so right there because you'll get overwhelmed. If I'd have thought, if you start a marathon, you think I've got 26.2 miles and you're just focusing on that. Um, it's going to totally overwhelm you. What are your thoughts, TV's Gary Damer? Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of carny comparisons that you could keep talking about. You know, you go out for a run, you might trip on a curb. Don't let that put you off. You might stand in a puddle and your, your shoes get piss wet through you know what I mean don't let that end your conquest of ever running again these things are going to happen so you might as well just get over the fact that your shoes are a bit wet and carry on you know go out the next day and start again with a clean pair of socks on <laughs> does that make any sense <laughs> and uh yeah <laughs> Yeah. That, that was it that was the end of my analogy I was done there with standing in a puddle what with the dirt that you get on your trainers metaphorically speaking um, and in uh, and in life so hopefully yeah go listen to the full podcast just want it to inspire somebody we don't want to be preachy and be like everyone should run but I do on the other hand want to be preachy and say everyone should run just in terms of what it's done for me um, and what I've heard it do for other people it really has like changed my life like and more mentally than physically um, I run every week and it sets me up for the week and it keeps me in a positive mindset. It keeps me creative. I have great ideas to do with my acting career when I'm out running. Um, and I just want people out there who maybe are watching and they've never thought of even giving it a go to just give it a bloody go. Um, if you could sum it up in one sentence so someone puts a pair of trainers on, what are you going to say? Um, the, the act of looking after yourself can feel like a big overarching horrible mission to accomplish just believe in yourself enough to put some trainers on run to the ND road and back because in the future your future self might really thank you for that oh that's profound that's pressure for you that gary no and mine's be patient it's not going to happen straight away um yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's the TV's Gary Damon for you. I'll give you another cliche the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step oh mine is don't you can't eat an elephant whole I mean, that is, <laughs> that is also great advice. Um, Wait, hole, hole as in W-H-O-L, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just to clarify, you can't eat an elephant whole, hey, uh, W-H-O-L-E. Um, 
I hope you've enjoyed this. Honestly, um, go check out the podcast. Listen to these guys on Behind the Medal. Social media, uh, their podcast, Behind the Medal. Social media is up now. I didn't tell you in the start as well. We talked about it in the podcast, um, our podcast. But, you know, the last guest these boys had on was Ed Sheeran, by the way, one of Dean's mates. Um, so do go and listen to him. It's just for the curiosity of what Ed is like and whether he's going to start running. Because I believe maybe sounds like he might be. Mm, yeah, well, we think we, well, listen to the podcast and you'll see how far we get into persuading him to run a marathon. Um, so yeah go uh, go listen to that and like I said at the start we are changing direction me and Petch are not going to be doing Watch Ross in the same format as you've got used to it over the last two years um, two years plus now um, I don't know when we're going to be back with a new episode of something like this but do keep an eye out on Twitter um, on Instagram for at on this dot TV's uh, Instagram Twitter and, uh, and Facebook because we're still going to be putting out a lot of micro content behind the scenes, scenes of these podcasts but maybe just not full like long form vlogs like this um, as well and if you're not a member of on this TV, and you're an actor. <sighs> you, they're, they're ruining the lives, what Dean. What do you think? I don't know what you're doing. How dare you wake up in the morning not signed up to act for this uh, TV? Act on this dot TV. What about you, Gary? I think Dean Lynn needs to learn what it's called. I was so confident. Go, he was confident there. Go yeah. sign up. I've got my T-shirt on that I promised you I'd wear at the start of this vlog. Petch bought me this for Christmas. Thank you, Petch. And it's also going to mean the last catchphrase ending to this season and potentially this style of Watch Ross is now going to going to happen, but be slightly different. I'm starting you boys really to make this work. Yeah. Um, normally, I would say, right, you know what time it is in three, two, one, but I'll give the countdown. You two shout the catchphrase and I'm going to turn around for the finale. Okay. So boys, you know what time it is in three. You know the catchphrase, don't you Gary? Yeah. yeah. In I three. Excellent. In three, two, one. Bye for now! Thank you so much for watching this episode. It really would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed and what you would like to see more of next time. If you want to catch more episodes, head over to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross or youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. I'll be back real soon. Bye for now. Yes, it is 2020, everybody. Happy New Year. Slightly belated Happy New Year. It's mid-January as we record this. What's the date, Patch? 20th? 18th? What is it? 21st. <laughs> Got it completely wrong. Not with it yet. Um, but I'll start again. I'll start again. <laughs>